So this is a Glow um, Flexicom or a British Gas 330. It's making the noise. So we put the boiler into low flame. Then we'll adjust the readings. Currently that's too low. So for the minimum, we adjust using the offset. Maximum, we adjust using the throttle. And the way to put this in service mode is we press the reset and hold the plus button until you get high. And you can cycle between high and low. And when you're done, you just reset again. Easy as that. Now we'll put the appliance into high. And this one to adjust it, we'll use the throttle, which is either T10 or two and a half mil key. And it'll go in there. And this time it's anti-clockwise to increase. Right, let's see what readings we're getting. Again, we want 9.3 plus or minus five. Maybe that is okay. So this is what we're getting in high flame, which is fine. We might lower that a little bit just to get a slightly better reading. It's really difficult to do this. It's clockwise to decrease. I had to use a star T10 for this because the paint is a nightmare on there. That's looking good. Yeah, again. Check the air intake. These are the readings you want with the case off as well. It's a really good Allen key set here from Amazon. Rainbow colored, so it's easy to grab what you need and it tells you everything. Just check the base of the sump as well. Make sure we're not nothing obscure going on there. Not too bad, nothing major. Let's clean out the contents. So this is making a noise now because I've got this chamber open. A little bit of debris and muck in there. back in. It's tricky to put back in because you've got to try and get that on there so I'm going to need two hands for that. I've also noticed this hole is there that should have a grommet in. So temporarily I'll tape over that. So that one's all done. I think it was the air gas ratio needed adjusting. 
I might attach the video that the customer sent me to the end of this. Uh, you could hear he was told by someone it was the fan, but now it definitely sounded like some kind of airflow issue with it burning. Um, I've adjusted those. Originally, the minimum was on 8.3, but it should have been 9.3 plus or minus 5. So, yeah, that went up quite a bit. Maximum adjusted slightly, but I actually turned that down a bit um, just to put it exact. So, yeah, sorted them other issues. Hopefully, don't hear back from them. We will see. I will let you know, I'm sure. off to the next job it should be a relatively simple one f75 fault nine times out of ten it is the pressure sensor i've got one of those with me here sometimes it's the pump as you've seen in one of my previous videos that i uploaded but yeah usually it's the pressure sensor so we'll go with that and hope for the best um yeah see you in the job there's your f75 <laughs> Okay, so I have some water somewhere. Let's get the torch in there. Okay, so we've got a leak. Do you know where that's coming from? Someone's left the filling loop on. Let's turn that off. Back of that panel there. One second. Here we are. Right. Torch back on there. So this pressure is going to be setting up. Yeah, really high. Dump some of that out. AAB's been leaking. The diverter. Can't see anything from there. Do some investigation as to where this is leaking from. Just gonna take this out and see if that plastic has any rust on it. Doesn't look like it is that. No, that's not leaking. This has a little 
hook there that the ball hooks onto. And then the nut goes around it. So for context, it had an F22 fault yesterday and then a nephew topped it up and now it's got F75 fault, obviously left the pressure just running. That needs sealing up. Got some black silicon from Regan. The only thing I can see where water's tracking is the back of the plate. Ah, I see it. That's got to be it. There. The water's just running down the back. That's the only bit that is damp high up. And obviously you've got the rust water tracking down. And then... That. So that is likely to be some new plate washers see if I've got any on the van don't actually think I have that's going to be new plate washers and hopefully not the jig hopefully that's not too rusted we shall see before I do anything let's test this okay one two three four Five, six, seven, seven. Oh, look, that's all completely loose. That side's okay. Right, so the plate is just completely loose. Seven turns on the bottom one, eight. tissue in there and try and dry that out. Uh, I've dried that out now. No signs of any drips. I'll leave that for a minute now the system's topped back up. And see if we've got anything. If not then I'd say we're okay with the amount of turns that I've got. So it's a waiting game for a few minutes. Have a look, it's still dripping. Let's see if you can see it on the big light, I don't think you'll see it. And a new washer is still dripping. So that's going to be a new jig, it's probably rusted. Well, it was rusted at the back. So, yeah. So that's a bit of a strange one. Um, a couple of days on from this job now. I've actually quoted them and had no response. So it's definitely still leaking. Very slow drip, so I don't know what they're going to do. I don't know when I'm going to hear from them, if ever. Um, it's leaking from that bottom right-hand side. Quite tricky to find because it wasn't tracking down in the normal places. But found it nevertheless. They, long and short of the job, originally what they didn't tell me was there was an F22 code before the F75. Um, they just called up with an F75, which is obviously normally pressure sensor or pump, usually pressure sensor, but there was also that issue. Um, yeah, who knows if we're here for then, there might be a part two. Initially, I started filming with the intention of a whole job from start to finish of two visits, but they've ghosted me. So who knows why your guess is as good as mine. I've done some work for them in the past, had to change a load of flu stuff because um, that was all rusted through, but yeah hopefully we'll hear back from them let's see and look out for part two if it ever comes <laughs>